Hopkinton. My name is Tara Sanda with eHop, and this is Know Your Vote 2020 Social Distancing Edition. Uh, this is the first in a four-part series where we will be meeting with town officials to discuss the articles to be voted on at town meeting, which will be held this year on a Saturday, September 12th. Joining us today via Zoom are Connor Deegan, our town clerk, and Tom Garabedian, our town moderator and host of annual town meeting. Thank you both for taking the time out of your busy schedule to meet with us. Uh, without further ado, I think I would like to just jump right in and start with you, Connor, if that's okay. Go for it. All right. So what I'd like you to do at first is just take us through town meeting and what it's going to look like. So how do we show up? Where do we park? Um, and then like what is, you know, there's going to be a tent this year outside. So tell us where that's going to be. And then after that, if you could take us through the check-in process. So it's my understanding that the process will be the same. However, it's gonna look very different. So if you could share with us what you have planned. Of course. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a tent over where the bus loop was in front of the high school, right next to the middle school. So parking is going to be over where teachers and students typically park in front of the high school and over by the HCA. Uh, when people can go and find a spot there, they'll be able to come over towards the bus loop from the side by that center sidewalk there. And there will be check-in tables where we'll have our election staff that would usually be there for your check-in. When you come up, it will be very similar, almost exactly the same town meeting. The only difference really being that there's going to be a plexiglass shield and we're all going to be wearing masks. Um, it's going to use the same system that we used for the last few town meetings with, uh, with our pull pads to have a little bit quicker of check-in so we can get people in and seated. Uh, but once you get in, we're going to try to aim for having each row filled before we actually get off and have let people kind of just sit wherever. All of the seating will be six feet apart per the Board of Health and the Fire Department. So we will not be allowed to move chairs. Uh, even if we're in the same household, we won't necessarily be able to sit together. We're all gonna have to kind of just go through it and work on just trying to get through it quickly and be able to get out of there for that. Uh, but that's really gonna be the only change with your usual checking of going over to the, the water tower parking lot and coming into the auditorium. Instead, you're just gonna go over, park there and We'll have plenty of signage. There'll be, everything will be kind of easy to see where you need to go from there. Okay, so now if somebody shows up to town meeting without a mask, will they not be allowed in? If somebody shows up to town meeting without a mask, we will try to make reasonable accommodations. Um, we're still working with the health director to figure out what those reasonable accommodations are. But, uh, but that would be a good question for Sean most likely to figure out what how we're going to be able to accommodate. Okay. Um, and you will have, um, will you have masks available if people forget them? Yes. Just okay. like we did at the, at the polls, we have masks ready for anyone who might have forgotten. It's so easy to just even forget it in your car. Yes. And if you even forget it in your car, it's like, you're already right here. You're already checking in. Just here, take this paper mask. You're good to go. Great. And I have to say that town election went great yesterday. So thank you very much for that. Happy to do it. <laughs> um, okay, so there will be uh, more handicap parking available at the high school. So yes, yeah, so Tom had brought that up and we worked uh, with Lieutenant Porter to come up with a solution to increase some of the parking that's typically for visitors right by the, uh, the, dro the old drop off loop there. Yes. And so we're going to basically kind of forwarding some of those off to be handicap only so that we can try to get some more room for folks there. Okay. Um, and there won't be any temperature checks or anything? Not to my knowledge. Um, I, I don't know if the health department will want to do something like that, but to my knowledge, I don't think there will be. Okay. Uh, I guess one of the most important questions I have today is uh, where are the bathrooms? So we're still working on some of the bathrooms. We're talking with the school department to see if we can use the school facilities. 
Uh, but worst case is we'll end up getting some porta potties that will set up close by to where the where the area is for the tent. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, how many people are you planning to attend town meeting or planning for? And are we limited to the number of people we can have at this gathering? So I, I'm always cautious about trying to guess how many people are going to show up at town meeting because that, that's rarely worked out well. Uh, it's always either more, far more or far less than I guess. So um, I, I, right now we have room for 200 roughly under the tent. Uh, it will be first come, first serve on, on tent seating, and there will be plenty of overflow seating, probably for at least another 100 that's already ready to go. After that, we will be able to, at the moderator's discretion, continue to expand to allow for more six-foot delineation of, of spacing for people. Um, it'll just be working with our public safety and health officials to make sure that we, uh, we expand it so that there's enough room for everyone. But there is no necessary limitation because it's regarding the right to vote. And okay. every registered voter in the town of Hopkinton has the right to come and make their voice heard at town meeting. Okay. Um, now, the check-in process will start at what time and what time will town meeting start? The check-in process is anticipated to start at roughly 8.30. And per the select board, the town meeting is due to start at 9.30. Okay. So that'll give about an hour time to, for people to be able to come in and start checking in. Okay. Uh, Tom, I think the next question is for you. Uh, among the changes of town meeting this year is also the quorum. Can you expand on that and how the select board uh, changed our quorum? The state passed uh, some legislation that allowed communities to reduce their quorum for town meetings uh, in light of the, the pandemic and in light of a concern that it might be difficult to meet quorum requirements given uh, people's concerns about COVID. Um, we recommended and the select board uh, agreed with us <clears throat> that we would reduce our quorum from approximately 117 people to 80 people. And so that will enable us to start town meeting with as few as 80 people, even though we do expect that, that more people will be attending. But it provides us with an opportunity to get underway on a timely basis and to, to get the business of, of town meeting uh, conducted in a, in a timely and effective fashion. Okay. Um... Now with that, the business of town meeting, there is um, some fanfare at the beginning. Um, I believe it's the, the Boy Scouts usually come or is it the Color Guard or the Boy Scouts? The Boy Scouts. The Boy Scouts. Will we be having that kind of ceremonial part of town meeting? Well, we'll certainly salute the flag. Uh, we're still checking uh, with the various organizations with the Boy Scouts uh, to, to confirm their ability and willingness to participate. Okay. All right. So let's start discussing once uh, town meeting starts, uh, what are the rules that are set in place? Well, it, it will be uh, usual rules. Obviously, the, the overlay to the entire town meeting is that we want to maintain uh, appropriate social distance so that everyone both feels safe and, and is safe to the greatest extent possible. Uh, with that, I think the, uh, you know, the, the rules at town meeting remain the same. We, we do want people to have the opportunity to be heard and to express their opinions. And so there'll be, uh, as there always is, a time limit on the ability of people to make their points and an opportunity for everyone to speak before an individual has a second opportunity to, uh, to approach a microphone and to, and to speak. That having been said, um, the only difference will be that if I sense that, that there is repetition in the points that various speakers are making, uh, recognizing that we're attempting to conduct this meeting in a shorter period of time in, mm -hmm. and uh, in a morning and early afternoon, I'm gonna be quicker to uh, suggest that the points have been made and, and ask the speakers to move on. 
Okay, so they'll still be allowed to go up to the mic, make their statement, and then one follow-up? Uh, they will be able to go up to the mic after they've spoken. Um, we'll have an opportunity to sanitize the mics so that the next individual uh, who comes up is dealing with an environment that uh, you know is free of free of germs and droplets and so on. Uh, they'll have a second bite at the apple, so to speak, only after others have had an opportunity to express their opinions and make their points. Oh, so it won't be an automatic follow-up. I mean, if it's a if it's a quick follow-up or clarification, obviously we'll let you know, we'll let that happen. But uh, we don't want people to monopolize the the mic and and uh, really take take too much time. I'll use my judgment to uh, to see whether the meeting understands the points that have been made. Of course. Uh, now, this question could be for you or could be for Connor, um, and it's the process of which somebody does go up to the microphone. How are they to, will somebody be there guiding or setting people apart the six feet as they wait in line? Will they be able to take their masks off at the microphone? And then I think you touched upon it quickly. There will be a cleansing of the mics in between speakers. Tom, do you want to there, start off? Sure, I'll, I'll start. There will be a cleansing between speakers. Uh, so they'll they'll be using uh, you know an alcohol wipe or something to that effect. But we certainly will ask people, and I'll I'll view this from from the head of the stage or the head of the, head of the meeting, that people not crowd uh, one another. That they maintain if they're going to be speaking, they maintain six feet distance from each person who may be in line. Um, and and it, again, we'll we'll attempt to enforce. The social distancing through um, really through common sense right so will you have like i know say at the farmer's market in the lines they do have lines on the ground of where you can stand when you're waiting in line is something like that planned for or are we going to kind of trust people we've talked about having uh having that worked in following the tent set up so that we can first see how it all looks and then we can on potentially even on the same day as the setup, be able to go through and do delineations with the building department as well as the fire department. Okay. And there will be two mics this year, as usual. Um, they'll they'll be at well, they'll certainly there'll be at least one mic. I think we're planning only a single aisle. Uh, correct me okay. if I'm wrong, Connor. And then there'll be another mic uh, to the extent that we have overflow. Uh, there will probably be another mic that uh, can accommodate the group that would be in the overflow area so that uh, the amount of um, traversing that people have to do and you know, crossing the paths and whatnot can be minimized. And then, of course, there'll be, uh, uh, there'll be separate microphones for me, for the, the uh, town council, for Connor, and for the select board. And Tom, you do remember correctly on that. It, we, had, uh, we had actually discussed that we would have a single microphone for the, and a single aisle uh, for the main tent, specifically because we wanted to try to maximize the number of people that we could keep under the tent. And two aisles would then decrease how many folks we could actually have under the tent before we had to start using overflow. Okay. Now, during our normal town meetings, when we host it in the auditorium at the middle school, there is a certain amount of wandering, gathering to discuss articles that are coming up. Will you be discouraging that kind of activity? In a word, yes. Okay. <laughs> You're in charge, you know, Tom. <laughs> we're, uh, you know, we're, we have to be mindful of the fact that um, you know, the more wandering or any wandering that goes on runs the risk of, of uh, violating the social distancing. And so um, you obviously you will be able to leave the, the tent or leave the overflow area for um, biology breaks and so on. But in, in terms of uh, allowing any congregation while the meeting is ongoing or any other milling around, we're simply not going to allow that. Okay. Uh, and this will be the first town meeting that food is allowed. <laughs> yeah, we're not inside the school auditorium. Right. Um, 
So there won't be anybody regulating kind of the distancing or marking. So we're going to ask that all town people just regulate yourselves, keep your distance, there stay will be, safe. There will be definitely some people who are in charge of regulating it. How active they'll be able to be with the number of people will definitely be uh, a challenge potentially. But, you know, like Tom said, if he sees that there's some, you know, milling about or people trying to congregate in a certain area of the hall, then he can say something to them. And if they're not going to follow the rules that we have set in order to protect everyone there, uh, then the, the I'm sure that the health director of the fire department or police department can move them along to outside the hall while they proceed to do that. Okay. Um, so now, do you anticipate having any kind of trouble hearing the votes being called? We'll, we'll have an adequate audio setup so that hearing should not be a, a problem. Okay. We are exploring uh, the use of an outside audio vendor to, uh, to handle those arrangements in the event that, uh, that we have uh, any concerns that the use of the school systems might not be as effective as we would like. Oh, okay. Uh, and visual displays are not going to be used. There will be no PowerPoints, correct? There, there will be no PowerPoints, uh, so there won't be a video screen. What we've encouraged the various uh, individuals who will present is to provide what they would ordinarily put onto a PowerPoint in hard copy. And so that hard copy will be distributed to meeting participants so that they have the ability to follow along through the hard copy mm -hmm. as opposed to what they would do ordinarily through a video screen. So we will attempt to uh, accommodate that uh, in, in, again, in a, in a hard copy fashion. So to me, it sounds like you guys have thought of everything. Um, I wanna thank you both for taking the time out to make this video with us. Uh, which will be shown on EHOP's website, as well as it will be sitting on uh, HCAM's uh, YouTube channel and their website. Um, but I just want to reiterate the points that um, Connor and Tom have shared with us today, um, being that you need to show up early, um, as soon as 8.30, so that they can get everybody checked in before the start of town meeting. Uh, I think get comfortable. Once you're in your seat, you're in your seat. Um, and so your activity is going to be limited uh, to kind of speaking at the mic and using the, the restrooms. Um, and I spoke to Tom the other day and one of his points was to educate yourselves ahead of time so you know your vote before the meeting um, and it'll move along a lot faster. Uh, and last but not least, I would embrace the weekend town meeting. Uh, this could be a nice change going forward instead of three late nights at the middle school. Uh, but I'm not gonna make any assumptions there. Uh, did I miss anything? I think that was it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so again, I'd just like to thank you for joining us for this segment of EHOP's Know Your Vote. And thank you, Connor and Tom, for your time. I would especially like to thank HCAM for their help uh, every year in producing this segment. Uh, but especially this year, because we're relying heavily on them getting our, um, our videos out. Um, and so please note that we do have three other segments that complete this series. Um, coming up, we will be interviewing um, a member of the select board, the town manager, uh, the planning board and CPC, and the school committee. Um, so this is a great way to educate yourself on the articles and allows you to reach out to the proper sources if you have any questions before town meeting. Um, we will see you on Saturday, September 12th at the high school outside. The meeting starts at 930, but check-in starts at 830. Uh, again, thank you all for joining us, and I look forward to the next segment. Kara, thanks thank so much you. for having us. This is always fantastic. You keep putting this on, even through COVID. <laughs> even in my basement. <laughs>